Welcome to our special Halloween episode of If It Scares You, Jump Scares, The Grave Diggers Notebook. Danny. I have shorter legs than you. I can't help it. It's not like you had to come anyway. Of course I did. Someone has to make sure you don't get murdered tonight. So why didn't you tell mom? Because then I'd get murdered tonight. <laughs> exactly. Ellen, why couldn't we just stay in tonight and watch a scary movie? You and I have very different definitions of scary movie. Well, yeah, you wanted to watch The Thing. That's rated R. Yeah, and you wanted to watch The Ghost and Mr. Chicken. That's a great Halloween movie. Yeah, if you were born during the Truman administration. What's that supposed to mean? It means you like old people movies. Old people movies aren't scary. Exactly! That's why we're doing something really scary. Stealing something from Mr. Sycamore's shed isn't scary. Then why are you so scared to do it? I'm not scared. I just don't think that's a good idea. Look, he's just a lonely old man. Do you really want to bother him? I don't know, man. The rumors about him are something else. He's got a pretty big house. What about it? It's too big and nice for his line of work. All he does is dig graves and take care of the cemetery. That doesn't put you in the highest tax bracket, you know? I heard that he digs the bodies back up after the funeral is done. He takes them way back into a secret room in his house. Or maybe in the shed. Anyway, he takes them. Somewhere. And he does horrible tests and experiments on them. Sells the secrets to the highest bidder. Some people even say he's an escaped Nazi war criminal. Come on, Ellen. He's not even German. Oh. You're right. But still, spooky experiments. Putting pickled organs into little jars, using lightning to bring eyeballs back to life, making fingernails grow even though the body is dead. You're so gross. It's so creepy and kind of awesome. You should be more respectful. Those bodies that he buries were all people once. They had, you know, hopes, dreams, and ideas and stuff. Still awesome. Even if Dad was one of those bodies once? Way to make it not cool, man. Hey, don't push! Then don't talk about Dad. This isn't about him. This is about doing something scary and fun on Halloween. You probably barely even remember him anyway. I remember him. That's what I thought. We're almost there. There it is. The shed's really close to the house. It's so close to the graveyard. What if Sycamore sees you? He won't. He's, what, a hundred years old? He can't see. Besides, it's almost ten at night. Old people go to bed at like five in the afternoon. Please don't make me go in there. No one's making you. But I can't let you go in there by all by yourself. Great, then you can help me find a cool souvenir. You can grab something too. A little something to remember Halloween 1993. You can tell your kids about it. Assuming we survive. The door's locked. Too bad. I guess we tried. Move over. Since when could you pick locks? Since Andy taught me how after school a few weeks ago. There, it's open. We're really going in there, aren't we? Yes! Yeah, <laughs> dusty. It's like no one's been cleaning here since the Carter administration. Maybe even longer. Fine, not since the Jefferson administration. You could hide a body in here and nobody would find it. Please don't talk like that. Gosh, stop worrying so much. Look around. There's nothing in here but old paperwork. Taxes and licenses and crap. Hey, I've got this journal or something. Could be interesting. Maybe. Keep looking around. Ellen. 
there's a light on in the house. What if he saw us? He didn't. He's just up to use the bathroom. Probably the third or fourth pee he's had to take so far. I could stand guard outside. Don't be ridiculous. That's how we get caught. Stay in here with me. There's nothing interesting here anyways. We could sneak a look at the graveyard and then go home. What if we just go home instead? Scared? Could you not? Is someone in there? Danny, run! Ah! Who are you? What do you want? I won't be one of your dead body experiments! I can't believe we made it out of there alive. Me neither. I didn't even get anything. That's what you're worried about? Next time, I guess. But getting chased off by creepy old man Sycamore is pretty good Halloween story. Well, I've got something. No way! You held onto that notebook the whole time? I mean, yeah. It looked interesting, I guess. Who knows what could be in there? It's probably just a mortician textbook or something. But maybe it's something cool. Let's read it together. Okay, cool. Mom's still not home. There's a voicemail, though. Hey guys, the car wouldn't start this morning, so I had to take the bus to work. I'll be home later than usual, be good to each other while I'm gone, and no gory movies! Good. That gives us a little time to look at the notebook. I don't know. Maybe we should return it. It doesn't belong to us. Mr. Sycamore doesn't care about it that much. He left it in a dusty old shed. It might not even be interesting anyway. Maybe it's just old records. We won't know until we take a look. Turn off the porch lights. We don't want any last-minute trick-or-treaters coming by. We've still got time to put the notebook back before Mom gets home. Just come over here. My father was a grave digger. My grandfather was a grave digger. I was third generation and heir to the Habakkuk Henry and Sons of Professional Burying Company, established 1826. You hail marry them, we bury them. This is his journal. Not a bad start to it either. I still think we should return it. Uh, what does it say next? I knew I'd get you to come around. By the time I was 17, I'd put hundreds of bodies six feet under all across the country. Men, women, children. None of them were safe from the spiteful old death angel. She reaped their souls. I took care of the empty husks they left behind with my paw. We took a moment every time to learn the stories of the dearly departed who they were, what they accomplished in their brief existence, and, most importantly, how they died. Here, let me read some too. When I had to bury the richest man in the country, there was little to keep me entertained during his funeral. He, like far too many in my line of work, died of natural causes. I found myself yawning behind my hand through all the wary speeches and rote prayers. When at last the bears lowered the old man in his mahogany box into the grave, the closest family members gathered with handfuls of soil to drop on the tomb that would hold him until doomsday. Hmm. This is getting boring. It's just a funeral. Wait! It's about to get interesting. That is when I saw her. A gorgeous woman, Florence. She stood there dressed in mourning black, her face partially obscured by a boisterous ebony hat and veil. As her gloved fingers released the handful of earth into her father's, I felt in an impure attraction to, to the grace of her movement. She was the most beautiful creature I'd ever beheld. Okay, this is kind of creepy. But my vision of her was all too brief. When the funeral ended, she was gone. Later that night, I thought of her as I lay in bed. I feared I would never see her again. She was a high society lady, a member of a wealthy family. I was a poor man. But my vision of her was all too brief. When the funeral ended, she was gone. Later that night, I thought of her as I lay in bed. I feared I would never see her again. She was a high society lady, a member of a wealthy family, and I was a poor man. Just before sleep began to shut my sad eyes, it came to me. There was a way to see her again. There was a way to bring my nameless princess back in my sight. I had the knowledge. I had the skills. In theory, at least I knew what I had to do. Just some trick-or-treaters. If we ignore them, they'll go away. Keep reading. I want to hear what happens next. It was so devastating to hear that the old man's wife died mere days after her husband. But it was another chance to see her, to see my beloved Florence. We talked a little, but soon the funeral came to an end, and she was gone yet again. 
I was left to wonder how I would manage to see her again. We don't have any candy. Go away. Before long, my sweet love's brother joined his parents in the afterlife. How unfortunate to lose someone so young with such a bright future, especially to a terrible hunting accident. Wait, these people keep dying so that old man Sycamore could see that girl at his funerals. Holy crap, they weren't just disappearing, Danny. Mr. Sycamore. You think he killed them? That's basically what this journal says. That's how he kept meeting with his creepy crush. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. There was another funeral after that. He started courting her. Oh no, oh no. On the day of our wedding, I found the strength for which I had prayed. That evening, I took my wife in my arms. I told her everything. How I worshipped her from the moment my mortal being laid eyes on her goddess personage. How I didn't know how to contact her. How I killed her mother, her father, and her brother, and another to get closer to her. How I killed a thousand more souls just to, oh no, oh no. One sec, Danny, for crying out loud. The look in her eyes when I confessed the beautiful, horrible truth. I said we don't have any it candy. It froze, froze my heart and ate at my soul. My wife didn't love me. She despised me with a hatred greater than that of angels for the devil himself. <laughs> yes, children, I killed her. I killed her to keep the secrets she would have ruined, even though I did it all for her. Mr. Sycamore. <laughs> Thank you for answering the door, young lady. It's good manners. You know, if you're gonna steal from someone, you really shouldn't shout out each other's names while you're escaping. It uh tends to give you away. <laughs> Take it from someone who's gotten away with a thing or two. We're so sorry, Mr. Sycamore. We didn't do mean to do anything bad. We just wanted to do something scary for Halloween. Oh, really? Yeah, we didn't mean to uh, steal your novel. His novel? As your bright sister just noted, all three of us are aware that what you've read is not a work of fiction. You hold my journal in your hands. A journal with seven decades worth of secrets. We... we know how to keep secrets. He's right. We're really good at it. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't take your word for it, children. It's been a long, long time since I've killed. But you two will have to take this secret to your graves. Oh, gosh. Please, no. I'll take good care of you. Preserve your bodies with all the nice chemicals so you look nice for your shared funeral. You'll have nice little graves together. <laughs> right by your father's, even. Now, come along quietly, and I promise... Your deaths will be fast. Ah! What on earth is going on? We stole this journal. <laughs> it was just meant to be Halloween He's here prank. to hurt us. What did I tell you kids about answering the door when I'm not home? Now, Mr. Sycamore, what brings you to our porch so late? Oh, my dear. I'm afraid the children thought I was a trick-or-treater. That's why they answered the door, you see. But I'm afraid your kids have been up to mischief tonight. Mischief, huh? It was just a joke. We didn't mean for it to go this He's far. He's going to kill us. Yes, I'm afraid they broke into my shed and stole something of mine. They didn't. Don't listen to him, Mom. He wants to kill us to keep a secret. What secret? I, I just came by, looking to get what they stole back. You see, they stole my, uh, novel. An old murder mystery that I wrote as a younger man. A novel? How interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've dabbled in writing once. It only has sentimental value for me now, but I do want it back. Oh my goodness, of course. Children, you give Mr. Sycamore his book back immediately. But mom, he killed people. He's a... Daniel, give it back now. <sighs> Thank you, dear boy. Mr. Sycamore, I can't tell you how sorry I am that my children did this to you. It's not like them at all. Oh, it's quite all right, my dear. It's not the first time the local kids have done Halloween mischief on my property. Probably won't be the last. I just hate to hear that. Is there anything that I can do to make it up to you? Oh, no, that's fine. I'm just glad to have my old book back. There must be something. Mom, he said everything was fine. Don't you try anything, young lady. Why don't you come over for dinner next week? You could tell me all about your novel. Oh, Hmm, that sounds simply delightful. Mom, don't. And, since the kids need to make it up to you too, 
why don't I have them do a few hours work for one of you these days too? You take care of that cemetery all by yourself. I'm sure you have a few chores you could give the kids to keep them busy. Oh, I'm sure I do, yes. That would be grand. Thank you. It's no trouble. I worry for you all by yourself on that big property. I hate for you to get hurt. Oh, not to worry. I'm still strong yet. And as long as everyone's careful, no one has to get hurt, right? But I won't trouble your lovely family anymore this evening. You all have a lovely night. You too. And happy Halloween. Mm. Yes. A happy Halloween to you too. And I'll be seeing you kids real soon. <laughs> Gravedigger's Notebook was written by Jackson Bylan, based on the short story The Gravedigger's Love Story, produced by Jonah Leisure and Garrett Ryan. Guest starring in this episode was Dana Whitesell as Ellen, Shaw Tanner as Danny, and Paige Blacklock as Mother. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to If It Scares You for more upcoming episodes and news. You can also follow us at Instagram at If It Scares You. We hope you have a safe and happy Halloween. Thanks for listening. See you again soon. You probably barely even remember him anyway. I remember him. Little. What is this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and since the kids need... Why don't I have them work for you for a few hours for you? <laughs> it's a tiny twisty. Yeah, I know.